In this lesson, we're going back to just reviewing our um, rules like product rule, quotient rule, composite, um, given our uh, values though in the form of a table. So like here, just so that we understand how to read this, like here's our X values when X is two and X is negative five. So if I said, what is F of two? Well, this is just my good old F of X value. So then that means here that my f of 2 is equal to 4. So this is how we have said in the past f, f of 2. If we were to look at the graph, um, when x is 2, then the y value is 4. So f of 2 is 4. So that's how we read this. So like here again, for example, if I wanted to know then what is the derivative of our function at 2. So we're now going to look at the derivative here when x is 2. So that value is negative two. That is the output for the derivative. So like here, if I wanna know what is g of x, just good old g for a function, g at g of negative five. So when x is negative five. So now not at negative one, right? Because we're gonna look at when x is negative five. So here, g of negative five, the output is negative two. So then what is the derivative of g here? at the x value of 2. The output is also 2, okay? So that's how we read the table. So like here, going back to our setup for our function, um, like product rule. So see how here I've got h of x is equal to f of x times g of x. So this is our product rule. So go back to product rule. Well, what was our rule? Well, our rule was we would take the derivative of our first function, right? f of x times g of x. Then we would add to that, then we would switch it, right? So now it's the derivative of g of x times f of x. And that is exactly what we're doing here, all of them for the x value, because we're looking for our derivative at um, x value of two. So we're looking for again, right? So what is our um, derivative for h of x here, our function, when the x value is two? So here we go. What is the derivative of the f function when x value is two? What's the output? Negative two times what is just g of x or g of two? Negative one. Then plus. Now we're gonna switch it, right? So now what's the derivative of g at the x value of two? It is two times this good old f of x or f of two, which is four. And now we solve. This is positive two plus eight, which is 10. So here our output for the derivative of our function when the x value is two, the output is 10. So now here, now notice how we're doing quotient rule because we've got f of x divided by g of x. It's two times g of x. So again, how would this look with our quotient rule? Well, remember now, right? Our setup would be, we would have our derivative of our f of x, our numerator, f of x times g of x. But now with quotient rule, we are going to subtract. Now take the derivative of g times f of x. Now notice we would always then do in our denominator g of x squared. But now notice we are now multiplying that value by two. So we're gonna still square it, but now also don't forget to multiply by two. So now that we've got our setup, we're looking for our function, our h of x here, when the x value is so we're gonna use negative five, right? So don't even use this top row. We're only focusing on negative five here. So here we go. What is the derivative? So f at five is four times this good old g of x, which is negative two. Then minus, now the derivative here, right? So the derivative is five times f of x, so it's good old f of x, which is three, all over 
two times, well, what is just good old g of x, right? Because we don't do the derivative, it was the original. That is negative two squared. And now it's just all about simplifying. So I'm running out of space, so I'll go right here. So this is negative eight minus 15 over now order of op, because that's technically two times four, negative two squared. So remember, right, order of operation. So here we've got, and we're gonna leave it in fraction form because this is like slope, right? Derivatives is slope, negative 23 over eight. Sorry, my um, here's a little behind. So negative 23, there we go, over eight. So now we're gonna do one more together, all right? Because now notice how, what if I had product rule? Here, let me erase this. What if we have product rule, but now notice how it's being multiplied by three. So here, we would set this up, right? Well, this is, so again, product rule, which is good old three now times our derivative of our f of x function times g of x, and plus, now notice it's not just the other derivative, it's still always right here being multiplied by three. So again, three times the derivative of g times f of x. And again, we are now looking at the x value of negative five. So here we go. So we're actually, again, using negative five. So this is three times derivative, which is four times just good old g of x, which is negative two. Then we're gonna add to that three times the derivative of g of negative five, which is five times just f of x or f of negative five, which is three. And now we just simplify. So notice now here we've got, um, so this is negative 24 plus 45, leaving us with the output 21. So for our derivative, when the x value is negative five, the output is 21. So notice how here, it's a U try, but see how now it's three times are here up top. So you're gonna do this same setup because we're multiplying by three, just like what we had here. So how about go ahead and uh, pause the video and try this U try on your own. And here we go. So just to make sure that you set it up correctly, and then if you just then need to pause and then go through the solving process, you just wanna make sure you set it up correctly, then go for it. So again, quotient rule. Now notice what's in the numerator, three times. So this is three times, again, our g of x first now, cause that's what's in our numerator, times just good old f of x, our denominator, then minus three times again, now flip it, right? So three times the derivative of our denominator times the numerator. So again, just like here with our three and times the original denominator, which is the f of x function raised to the second power. So notice how we are using and looking for our derivative for our function here at the x value of two. So here we go. All right, so we're gonna set this up. So you should have for your values of two, so the derivative of here. So you know what, let's try this. Let's, oh, no, it's not gonna let me move the table, sorry. I'll go back, sorry. Okay, so here we go. So we've got three times. So three times the derivative of g of x times h of x. And again, we're focusing on two here. So derivative of g times f is two times four is what you should have set up here. Then minus three times, uh, whoop, three times. Now the derivative of um, f times g. So the derivative of f times g is negative two times negative one. So negative two times negative one over the original f of x or f of two, which is four squared. 
So now when you simplify, you got, so here we've got 24. Now this is still two times three, so minus six over 16, which gives us 18 over 16, which can be simplified um, to nine over eight. So again here, what if we had like our composite function, right? So I've got um, f of x is equal to, oh, so f of x is equal to c of x squared. So now keep in mind, the f of x, so our g of x squared, this would be set up as, so let's write it. Well, notice how it's a function inside being raised to the second power. So that's why it's chain rule. Because this is if when we had like um, uh, 2x plus 3 to the second power. We would do product rule and then do the derivative of what's inside. So we would bring down, so it's now two times, still v of x, right? We don't do anything with it. Now raised to the one less, which is just one. Then times the derivative of the inside, which in this case is d. So that would be our chain rule. Now we set this up where the x value is three. So we're only focusing on the x value of three. So here we go, we've got two times, just good old g of x, g of three, which is negative one, and times the derivative of g, which is seven. This is negative 14, so that is our output. So again, just like if I were to apply chain rule, right? Because this is the square root of a function inside, like the square root of, I don't know, like natural log of x. So this is our chain rule, where if we need to, we would rewrite this, right? This is the same as h of x is being raised to the one half power. So again, to apply uh, our um, chain rule, we would first follow our power, right? So we would bring down, this is one half times h of x, now raised to the negative one half power, then times the derivative of the inside, so the derivative of h of x. So again, now if we want to rewrite this, this is one over two times the radical h of x, right? Because this is raised to the negative one half power, so that's why it's in the denominator now times the derivative. So here we go. We are now focusing on the x value of four. So I'm not gonna focus up top, right? We're gonna only focus on here, these values at four. So this is one over two times the square root of just h of x, which is nine. And then times the derivative of h of x, which is five. So here notice, well, square root of nine is three. So this is one over two times three, which is six times five. Or remember this can be re, uh, written as five over six from one six times five. And so now here for our next um, composite function, notice how we've got h of d of x. So this is like when we had um, sine of cosine of x, right? Where we would first do the derivative of the outside function, so sine. So like, let's say, for example, if we were to go through this, right? We would say that derivative of sine is cosine. So we would have cosine of cosine of x, right? We would bring down that inside function. Then times the derivative of our inside function. So it's the same thing here, how we would set this up. This is, we would take the derivative of h, so h, but then keep the g of x, then times, now the derivative of the inside, which is v, so derivative of g of x. So here we go. Now we're gonna focus on the x value of four again, so we'll just use that. So notice, the derivative of 
H but of G of X. So here we got to first figure out, well, what is G of X? So G of X or G of four is three. So I've got the derivative for H of three times the derivative of G of X, which is negative two. So now notice, well, how are we gonna go about finding this? Well, we got to go back to the x value of 3. So we actually do need the x value of 3. So now the derivative of h at 3 is negative 3. So here we've got negative 3. Oops, sorry about that. We've got negative 3 times negative 2, which is positive 6. So here, go ahead and pause the video and try this U try on your own. So if you need reference, this U try is like the first example here that we did. And here we go. So again, if you just wanna make sure you set it up correctly, your derivative here is power rule first. So three times, keep H of X, but now it's raised to the second power, right? Because so you have to subtract one then times now the derivative of the inside, which is h of x. So now let's start our setup. We're focusing on the x value of three. So we're only focusing on three. So here we go. Three times h of x. So h of x is negative two. So three times negative two squared times the derivative of h of x, which is negative three. So now here, notice you've got three times four, right? From negative two squared, which is 12 times negative three, giving us negative 36. 